His brilliant new album is called Humbly Vulnerable. Please welcome the star of Free Guy. It's the one, the only, Lil Rel Howry. <laughs> I'm so happy to see you. Um, thank you for making the time for us because you, I think, might be the busiest man working in show business <laughs> at, the, at the moment. You are, you've been in so many movies this year. You're in Free Guy, Vacation Friends, Bad Trip, Fatherhood, Tom and Jerry, Space Jam, Judas and the Black Messiah. This is your only day off before you start a new film tomorrow, right? Yeah, I, start, I just wrapped Sunday. Uh, one movie, and then I start, yeah, I start tomorrow. How are you doing all this? I don't know. Why are you... <laughs> and why are you here? I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're so happy that you are. I'm so thrilled. We love it every time you're, uh, you're here. I mean, it is incredible, the amount of, uh, of work that you're doing. Yeah. Um, we were talking about dating just now at the top of the show. <laughs> you're single at the moment. How's, how's that going? Do you have time? To date at the moment, can you even squeeze that into the schedule? I've been trying to. So, at first, I was, like, really focused on dating with intention. Like, okay, I'm dating to meet my next wife and all that now. And then I gave myself a week last week. I'm like, yo, if I don't meet her next week, I'm back in these streets. <laughs> so... <laughs> so I'm back. So I'm, back. I'm out here. That's it. <laughs> Just straight back, straight back. <laughs> well, you, you've just released this brilliant comedy album. It's so good. Uh, it's called uh, Humbly Vulnerable. Um, what's the significance of the title? Um, well, you know, I, I, this is the first time I went on stage in like a year and a half, so which was probably the most nervous I've ever been. So hang on, you hadn't done a warm-up show? You didn't do any shows leading up to this? You just recorded the audio yeah. of the first time back on stage? Yeah, so it was just me venting. Like, just whatever I wanted to talk about that I was going through during the pandemic and quarantine, I talked about it on there. And it was crazy that it was... Uh, I, I'm actually surprised. How, I think this is my best work, and then I didn't really practice. <laughs> <laughs> but I think audiences can feed off that. I think they feel when something feels completely natural and organic. Like, there's a really funny bit where you talk about going to... Um, like church online, <laughs> Zoom like church. Zoom church, <laughs> which my parents did, but I never did. What What is Zoom church like? It's, it's basic. I mean, well, even when I talk about it on the album, it was kind of funny because you know people say anything in the comments, even if it's church. <laughs> <laughs> so like, like what? <laughs> just mean stuff, you know what I mean? No, really? And, like one preacher was really reactive to all the comments, and I talk about it on there where he preached like, "Yeah, say it to my face," you know. <laughs> <laughs> See you tomorrow, Larry. Three, four, five? Question mark. You know, uh, but no, Zoom church was hysterical. And like, like they had the choir singing in different boxes, and if people had bad Wi-Fi, it'd be. It was a lot. I was cracking up. And like one time, I remember I was like the only person in the Zoom, which is even sadder. Like he kept waiting. Like, well, can they come in? Here? Like, ain't nobody coming in here, man. <laughs> you know, I think what what you get from this album is you are such an accomplished stand-up already, and I think getting better with every passing year. But you... I didn't, I didn't realise how young you were when you first did yeah. stand-up. Is this right? You, you were underage yeah. and you snuck into a comedy club. So I didn't even sneak in. What I did was I got there really early. So I helped them set up. They didn't question anything. They thought I worked there. Right. So, so I did that so they wouldn't check my ID. So I got there as soon as they opened, literally helped set the chairs up and just sat there until the show started. And then put your name down to go put up. Put my name down to go up, yeah. And how did it go? That first time was, uh, was tough. I, <laughs> that, that I'll never forget. You know, you, everybody remember when they bombed, but, I, like, I ain't had no facial hair. I was cursing. Like, everybody looked at me like I was a baby. Like, who baby up there cursing? You know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a true story. <laughs> and I was bumming so hard. And DJ Dollar Bill is my good friend. Damon Williams was hosting. And he played someone please call 911 while I was on the stage. No. Yes, that's the saddest walk off a of stage. And I remember just sitting there, just sitting in the audience, just, just in shock. Like, I can't go home now. Like, I didn't know what to do. Like, but yeah, I bumped so hard. And he played someone please call 911. But it takes such courage <laughs> to just go, okay, that was that. I'm gonna get up. How, how, what was the time frame between bombing that night and getting back up and doing it again? I got back, I came right back to that club the next week and had a really great set. 
And what's funny, because that's when I used to record my sets. I used to uh, you know, cassette tape. Sure. I <laughs> have my little brother Matt listen to the tape. He's like, dude, why are you going back? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, he's like dying laughing at me, bombing. Like, dude, this is hysterical. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it, it's some once you get that bug of stand up, man, it just doesn't go away. Like, that's why even we're doing this, and I, I'm busy making movies and stuff, but like, I try to take a break sometimes, but then once I go on that stage or walk in that club, it's a wrap. It's just a comedy, I always say, saved my life. You know what I'm saying? Like, com like stand up, no matter what I've been through in my life, always stand up has always had my back. So I, I always love stand up forever. Well, and I hope you will just continue to do it because I, I feel like this is a real progression for you where you, you really, you've got some stuff to say and it's, it's absolutely brilliant. And like you say, you've got these incredible movies. Congratulations on Free Guy, which has been a massive, <laughs> a massive hit. There's already talk of a sequel. For anyone who hasn't caught the film yet, explain what it's about and, and who you play. Uh, Free Guy is basically, I mean, we, we, we make this video game world come to life. Like me and Ryan Reynolds' character, we don't even know we're video game characters. Mm. <laughs> um, but it's, it's, just, it's, it's a fun movie. And it's hard for me to talk about it if you ain't seen it, because I don't want to, like, it's so many little cool things happening, but it's just a lot of fun working with Ryan. But it's a, it's a ride. It's funny. It's a lot of heart in it. It's a lot of action. And I think it was so funny, the, the coolest thing I'm hearing from audiences, they just, they're really surprised about all the little messages that's in the movie. So, uh, man, Free Guy, I'm, I'm, it's crazy how good it's doing. And Ryan Reynolds, man, is one of my favorite actors, and I had so much fun working with that brother. He's so dope. Sean Levy was an amazing director. He's fantastic, it, it great. yeah. I mean, you've had so much success in film, TV shows, hosting, stand-up. Like... What's the next thing you want to do? Is there a specific character you'd like today to play? Is there a specific genre of movie that you'd want to do? What is that thing? Well, you know what's funny? A couple of things, right? I do want to play a villain, right? I'm ready to, I'm, I'm always the hero. Fine, I get it. I'm saving people. Cool. Sure. I want to be a bad guy. Like, yeah. I, I want to, like, throw audiences off because they used to see me being a good guy. So to be evil, it's like, oh, I want to throw people off with that. Uh, but then you know what's funny? This is what I really want to do outside of the business. I want to I want to own an NBA team. I know it sounds crazy. <laughs> I, I really do. Like I do. I want to be an owner. I truly do. So if you could pick a team right now, who are you gonna own? You gotta go with a team that's not that good. I think because I feel like that's the one I can afford for me to invest in. <laughs> <laughs> so it have to be the Sacramento Kings. <laughs> But I think it's a be, I think you can make this happen. I think I think about it a lot, actually. Like a lot more than you think. It's like weird. Like I have a I'm a such a huge basketball fan, so I'm constant. That's like what I do in my off time is like me and my brother, you would thought we had like a podcast where we talk on the phone about basketball. Like you yeah. know, like listening to it, it's just us talking. Um, but I love the NBA. Like if I wouldn't do it, I would be a scout. I think you'd be a great one. I'd be a, I know I would. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think there's a very real chance in like Eight years time, you're going to be unveiled, owning 25% of the Sacramento Kings, and they're going to play this clip at the press conference. <laughs> Seriously, I hope that happens. Actually, I hope it does too. But I also hope you keep doing stand up and keep doing movies. You are so ridiculously talented, and thank you for finding the time to be here today. We're so honoured to have you.